In the United States, automatic pistol design was rare due to the plethora of revolvers available. John Moses Browning studied the problem and developed some small, low-powered pocket pistols. With little interest from the US, he sold the design to a Belgian company that would go on to great success with his designs. Browning went back to the drawing board and eventually came back with a simple but robust design for a locked breech mechanism that showed itself as the Colt .45M1911. The Colt 45 would become the longest serving and most successful large caliber pistol design in the world. And with the reliability and heavy caliber, it was rapidly adopted by the US military forces. Meanwhile, Spain, utilizing Browning's earlier designs, became the powerhouse of design and production for Europe. The French and Italian governments ordered large contracts for 7.65 mm automatic pistols and dozens of small companies sprang up to meet the demand. After the First World War, these companies continued to manufacture Ibor automatics named after the Spanish territory that was the center of arms manufacturing. The poor quality of design and material used in some of these companies led to a decline in the demand for Spanish-made arms. It would take many years for the Spanish to counter this trend. Other designs of note include the German Walter pistol that conquered the double action requirement. An automatic pistol could only be carried either loaded and hammer cocked with safety on, or with an empty breech and hammer down, requiring additional effort to ready to fire from the holster. Walter enabled pistols to be cocked and then drop the hammer with a safety. The trigger need only be squeezed to raise the hammer to the cocked position, then released to fire around. The Walter P38 was adopted by the German army in 1937. French designer Charles Péter made modifications to Browning's locked breech and produced a pistol for the French army. His design patent was purchased sometime later by the Swiss and modified to produce the SIG line of pistols. The Japanese introduced their own homegrown revolver design in 1893 the Meiji 9mm 26 Nenkenju. Although it did have several mechanical traits identical to other overseas models. They also produced an 8mm self-loading pistol. The Taisho Model 04, designed by Kijiro Nambu, though not officially accepted as an officer's sidearm, was very popular with them nonetheless. It was also chambered for various calibers, including 7mm. The later Model 14, introduced in 1925, saw action in Manchuria. After which it was modified once more in 1937, with lessons learned in the field. Unfortunately for Japanese officers, the Model 94 was also introduced during wartime. Production standards slipped and the weapon became hazardous to operate. Browning made improvements to his 1911 design which evolved into the Browning high power pistol. Again another very popular weapon. Once again, apart from fiddling with the details, the basic automatic pistol design was set by the late 1930s.